what is going on guys welcome back to the channel critical overlord here this is the review the long overdue review i have for the second season of my favorite show ever uh buffy the vampire slayer uh, now picking up at the beginning of season two it's like a couple of months after the end of season one we're catching back up with buffy willow xander giles uh we're back in sunnydale it's been a couple of months the summer's gone by since buffy defeated the master the the main big bad of season one each season we have this uh new villain recognized as the big bad uh that that's the the term coined when buffy was on the air called the big bad uh and season two is really where i think the show finds its footing i know for a lot of people they feel like the show is still very gimmicky at this point but honestly i feel like it's a mix it's a mixed bag of both and buffy kind of takes its own the show finds its own footing and it starts going to those places that uh it probably would not have been going or you wouldn't expect it to go because of how gimmicky and cartoonish some of the prior episodes have been we still have those filler episodes with the monster of the week types where it's just like throwaway episodes like inca mummy girl or just those throwaway episodes that no one really talks about uh outside of the stuff that has to do with the main ingredients of this of the actual season um i feel like each season of buffy has to do there's a different theme and a different message each season i feel like season two's lesson and theme about uh the show that is trying to get off or get across is how the consequences that we have for our actions and how buffy the vampire slayer the show itself is about a young girl going from adolescence to adulthood and navigating her way through that and all of these demons and all of this stuff in this show they're basically metaphors for all of the things that that we face in our everyday lives as we're struggling to make sense of life and be responsible adults and face these hardships that come in our life uh and taking them head on and knowing that we can get through them and things do get better and we're not always alone um season two of buffy i feel like is where the show finds its footing we are reintroduced back with the characters that we met in the last season uh we're catching back up with buffy willow xander giles angels back um cordelia we get some new characters thrown in there i believe this is the season where we meet oz who be who quickly becomes a love interest uh for willow or he develops a crush in willow i don't think the two actually start dating until halfway until the end halfway at the end of the season uh all the way through until he his his departure from the town in season four spoiler alerts uh getting into like what the whole season is revolving around uh again it's a few months after the end of season two or the end of season one we're back at sunnydale high school starting back up buffy's back in town she spent the summer away with her father uh she hasn't really come to terms or uh come to terms or like coped with the fact that she actually did die at the end of the last season at the hands of the master she kind of never really got over that whole ordeal um and i feel like i don't know what she's kind of going through i think it's like a ptsd of sorts ptsd of sorts that she's going through just from the simple fact that she died and she came back uh she hasn't really dealt with that in the most healthy manner she's being mean to her friends she's being mean to angel who angel and buffy's relationship heats up uh to the maximum degree that i think anyone wants their relationship to get to for the, for better and for worse these two uh their relationship is tested like i've never seen any other relationship tested before in my life <laughs> um but she's on this like bad girl mean girl streak she's like having this cordelia vibe to her similar to how she was prior to becoming the slayer because we know how buffy was in la if you've seen the original buffy film buffy even describes to herself uh that she was just like cordelia cordelia before she was uh given these responsibilities as the slayer um uh, and she was given a new looking glass to see things through life on uh but, but yeah school starting back up we're back at sunnydale high uh there's a new villain in town this is the season that introduces us to james marsters uh well acted character who steals i feel like every time he's on screen he is brilliant he this character just never gets old the character of spike i feel like he is one of the most well-developed characters that i've ever seen come across any tv series he starts off in a very and he starts off as a villain and as the show progresses he goes into other territories where he's kind of battling that inner he's battling he's torn between that sh shed of humanity that's that might be remaining in him uh because i know in this show and in any show vampires they don't have a soul uh but spike kind of shows that maybe there's some remnants there's some remnants of that person that this that the demon in them is is just at at a at a war a constant war with and 
the way his character progresses throughout the show and the th and the changes he goes through i just think he's and the in the send-off that he gets at the end of the show i think he is just he is an amazing character i'm glad that they did not uh originally kill him off as as was planned he was supposed to be killed off he was supposed to be a one-off villain i'm glad they kept him around and just had him stick around for more seasons on this show uh Giles's relationship with Mrs. Calendar is building. We learn several things about her and her connections to Angel, and we learn more about why Angel is uh, how, or how Angel got his soul as a vampire, how he was cursed, and his connection to Mrs. Calendar. And we actually see Angel lose his soul in this series or in this season, rather. And we are introduced to the character of Angelus, who is the alter ego of Angel when he does not have his soul. This is what Angel was like before he got his soul. He's a bloodthirsty. Uh, vindictive and quite destructive vampire um i like how this is all brought about by the first encounter that he and him and buffy have when they have sex on on the night of her birthday and i just like how it how it relates to the consequences that come when you make decisions that you might not you're you're not ready for i i just like how the whole the whole villain arc here i, I believe would angel and buffy and her losing her virginity to him i like how it's kind of just a big metaphor and a big representation of of something that could occur in life not in that degree but you could deal with some some severe consequences when you're making decisions that you may not be ready for such as the one that buffy did when she just had had sex with angel when she probably should not have done that um and I believe Angel was actually pushing for her, pushing for them not to, but he he gave in because that's what Buffy wanted. Uh, the season is this is one of the best seasons of the show. Season two is right up there in the top three to the series. It's in the top three, no doubt. If my if the if the audio just went just went mute for a second, it's because my mic fell. So I do apologize there. Um, it's season two is one of the better seasons of this show. It's well acted. Sarah Michelle Gellar is absolutely amazing once again in the role as Buffy. This is the season where the show actually finds its footing and it goes in some areas that I never really thought I'd. It goes in areas that I feel like a lot of people didn't think the show would go in back when it was originally aired because season one was kind of just a meh, uh, could live without it not getting another season. But when it gets to season two, it really hooks you in and you're like, OK, I want to see more of these characters. I want to I want to uh, see what else this show can do with these characters because they all end up in a very different different position by the end of season two. Willow's dabbling with magic. She she finally has a boyfriend. She's no longer lusting after Xander. Uh, she is still to some degree actually lusting after Xander, but she finally is becoming her own person. She's growing out of that shyness. Uh, Xander's dating Cordelia. Giles is having to come to terms and grapple with the betrayal of the woman he loved. Buffy's learning from the consequences that she made by having sex at a very young age, uh, of the consequences of having sex at a very young age, and just a plethora of other things that I feel like. Season two, season two is one of those seasons of a show where I think there's almost nothing wrong with it outside of the fact that it was probably a little too short. You probably wish it could have gone on a little bit longer. Season two of Buffy the Vampire Slayer is absolutely amazing. I love it. Uh, and the show has nowhere to go but up from here. And then it goes down a bit after season five. Uh, but we'll get to that when we get to those seasons. Uh, but let me know what you guys think about season two down in the comment section below what are some of your favorite episodes from the season oh and also in this season we are introduced to another slayer something that was sparked from the result of buffy dying because if you recall fans of the series i'm sure you're aware of this uh in every generation there's only one chosen one and the next slayer isn't called until uh the slayer actually dies buffy dying at the end of season one even if it was for a split second created this issue in the slayer line where now there's two slayers that are alive Buffy technically shouldn't even be alive right now she should be dead and it should have been this new slayer that we meet her name is Kendra uh she Buffy in this case technically should not be alive but she is and we have this loophole here in the slayer line and the magic surrounding it and this kind of is also where we get the breadcrumbs I think setting up the things that come in the final season of the show uh but let me know what you guys think about season two down in the comment section below if you haven't already make sure you subscribe and turn on post notifications so you never miss a video in the description i'll have links to all my social media accounts i'm on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there to let me know if there's any movies news or reviews you would like me to cover 
in the future and also down in the comment section i'm gonna have a link to the facebook group go ahead and join that group if you want to stay update up to date on anything regarding horror and other content related to jeepers creepers or buffy the vampire slayer with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video